hello today uh, i'll give you a challenge that uh, how much liquid you can pour into some tumbler or cup or this kind of soup so the answer is up to its brim only can we go above it so here i challenge myself that uh, i will try to cross this brim i will fill it beyond its capacity so here i go so right now it is completely filled uh, yeah not completely actually little bit is left but now all right it looks like uh, no more water can be poured into it but now i will go drop by drop and uh, there should be no vibration in the level i have to ensure that otherwise due to those vibration that water will spill out now you can see level is rising you can see so this is what i did okay i think i have done i have uh, you can see um just i have crossed the limit and uh, now this scoop has water more than its holding capacity how much more can i go further still going up still going up going up and uh, it can spill any time now okay now i am not going to take risk anymore so what is uh, the reason behind what what is holding this liquid still in um, contact with this uh, scoop so that uh, beyond if after crossing its holding capacity still it is uh, within this um, scoop uh, okay now let's see till how long will it go uh, still i think one more drop oh my god one more one more oh you can see still it is curving but oh now it has so here is the solution surface tension it is responsible whatever you have seen so far and not on only for that but for several other surface phenomena of liquids not only water but for other liquids also the question is what is this surface tension all about in order to understand this first we should know about structure of atom so we know an atom consists of a nucleus containing positive charge and entire mass of the atom and uh, electron revolve around the nucleus in definite orbits and uh, there can be so many orbit depending upon number of electron uh, containing in that atom so uh, if some other atom is in the vicinity or uh, close uh, in the closeness of that atom uh, i don't um, i'm i'm not saying that both are identical they can be they cannot be mm, so actually i have made uh, both of them look similar but uh, it is just for the drawing purpose and nothing else so what happens actually nucleus of this atom attracts electrons of this atom you might be wondered that how is it possible it is very far yeah i still there will be some uh, weak attraction and this will be attracted by its electron will also be attracted by nucleus of other atom so um, all right uh, yeah of course um, there will be a repulsion between electron of both and a repulsion between nucleus of both now between different materials um, and between same materials the resultant of force the resultant of these force by which we can say uh, now i'm not taking this as two parts of atom i'm taking a, an atom as a whole so ultimately both the atoms somehow interacted um in such a way so that if we um, bring them close uh, they attract each other and that attraction is called interatomic or inter 
molecular force. I am talking about atom, but if there is a group of atoms, so that group of atom that is a molecule can attract molecule of same kind or molecule of different kind. Now there are two types of intermolecular forces, interatomic or molecular forces, IMF, oh, interatomic force or intermolecular force, full form is here, so not to be get confused. So we can divide it into two parts. See, I'm not going deep into chemistry and uh, talking about Van der Waal forces or magnetic <coughs> forces and uh, other kind of forces. Just I'm dividing it into two categories. One is cohesive forces. And other one is adhesive forces. Okay, mm, so what is this cohesive force? Adhesive force, we know, adhesive, some glue which um, holds two surfaces together. So adhesive forces are those forces, those interatomic or intermolecular forces which um, acts between atoms or molecules of different materials. Intermolecular forces or interatomic forces between two different materials. So what is cohesive force? Intermolecular forces or interatomic forces between two molecules, two or more molecules of same material. And now I'm just focusing on this cohesive force, the concept of cohesive force. So let us suppose right now, because surface tension is uh, more related to liquids. Yeah, of course, for solids, we can say um, about, we can also uh, consider uh, solids into this category, uh, but not the gases because uh, gases do not have a proper well-defined surface. Solids have, but uh, solid don't have that nature um, by which this uh, surface tension can be explained. So it can be explained um, definitely uh, for liquid phases only. So that is why uh, now for uh, till the end of this uh, chapter, uh, I'll be considering, uh, I will be correlating the surface tension for liquids only. So let us suppose we have a liquid in a container. I'm not drawing that container. There's a level of that liquid, that top surface of that liquid or free surface of that liquid. And I'm drawing few molecules of this liquid here, in fact here also, and here also. So there is a region around a molecule in which uh, it exerts intermolecular force or it experiences intermolecular force. So right now I'm talking about cohesive forces and uh, these uh, all the atoms of this liquid are all identical. So let us suppose if this is that sphere of cohesive force, effect, effective sphere for cohesive forces. So this atom will be pulled in all direction equally because of this cohesive force. Now, if we move a little bit upward toward the surface, there is another molecule. So you can see it will be more pulled toward the, um, uh, it will more pulled downward because on upper side there are very less number of molecules. And what about this, which is just at the top of the layer, all these, but uh, for the sake of simplicity to avoid uh, overwriting, I'm drawing here. This is its effective region of cohesive force. So now it will be pulled downward effectively, all right, here and here, but not in upward direction. So close to the surface, the molecules experience a force in downward direction and due to which there is a stretch in the surface of liquid. And now let us suppose I have contained this liquid into that scoop. If I'm taking the example of that scoop, so we can understand why it was curving in that scoop. It was like this, 
I'm not drawing entire of the scoop here. So why it was like this? It was not spilling out because the molecule which were about to spill out were being pulled inside. Yeah, of course, there uh, is some adhesive forces also with the, uh, that scoop, but this cohesion, this cohesive forces are pulling this surface. And later on, when water spilled out, actually this surface was breached. This surface was broken. It was shaking and uh, then loading more and more water made it a little bit more than the holding uh, capacity of these forces. Then it spilled out. So now, all right, after a long foundation I have laid to explain surface tension, now I can define surface tension. So unbalanced cohesive forces near the surface gives a stretch to the surface of liquids. This stretch is called surface tension. So the question is whether this surface tension is force or something else. So the answer is uh, in its mathematical explanation, uh, mathematical expression. So mathematically, surface tension, I in short write it S10. Mm. The same is uh, actually, uh, or its symbol is S. In some books, it is uh, capital T also. So mathematically, surface tension is equal to force experienced per unit length of an imaginary line drawn on the surface of liquid. What does it mean? So let us suppose, once again, I'll draw that scoop from where I started this discussion. I'm not making it completely. So it has a stretch on its surface. So imaginary, I would consider an imaginary line. Or if you uh, want to see it materially, then you can put a straw or a thread. So it will be pulled out from both the sides. But it will remain at rest. So, force experienced, surface tension is the force experienced per unit length. And see, here I will write effective length. What does it mean? It means that if that N effective can be any of the, the following according to situation. So, L effective will be 2L if I have placed a line over it like a straw it will be pulled on both sides so that is why if it is of l length so i have to put 2l l l so 2l so at that time l effective will be 2l now let us suppose instead of this straw if we put a wire ring here then it will be pulled out and pulled in so at that time l effective will be twice into 2 pi r and if instead of this wire ring a disc is placed so it will be pulled outward along circumference only so at that time it will be 2 pi r now you can understand what will happen if there is a square square frame only or square solid only so the situation will change accordingly so that is why i have placed here l effective in this case l effective is 2 l so s equal to f upon 2n as far as present case is concerned or simply a hypothetical line is concerned so unit of s is newton per meter and that is si unit and we know that pgs unit will be dime per centimeter i'm not going to establish a relation between newton per meter and dime per centimeter try it yourself and uh, instead, I'm not finding out its dimension. Try it yourself. But these are important. So the bottom line is surface tension enables a surface, a liquid surface, to minimize 
it's surface area so uh, for this region if uh, freely falling drop uh, you know, takes uh, the shape of uh, a sphere but actually due to gravitational pull and all uh, then it becomes of this shape otherwise in uh, 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 gravity free region uh, it will be uh, a spherical shape because a sphere has minimum surface area um, for relatively um, as compared to relatively uh, identical other solid surfaces uh, other, other solids so mm, there are some other examples of surface tension like uh, uh, insects few insects um, they rest on the uh, water so this is water and there is some insect so they can stand on the surface of water because there is a stretch on the surface of liquid and uh, due to that stretch they can stand over it and uh, disinfectants disinfectants are designed in such a way so that uh, their surface tension is minimum so whenever if um, those disinfectant uh, are uh, being applied on uh, a surface uh, it spread over that surface like if let us suppose there is a wound and we are applying some um, antiseptic onto it so if it has greater surface tension it will not spread it will be just uh, deposit somewhere but if it has uh, very low surface tension it will spread and provide greater effect on the affected region affected area and due to surface tension um, soaps and detergents work because uh, if uh, they have greater uh, surface tension they would not um, go deep into the cloth but if they have uh, lesser surface tension then they can easily uh, spread throughout the cloth so um, we will discuss about uh, more effect of surface tension later but uh, first we will do some mathematical uh, analysis of surface tension so that's for sure that uh, due to surface tension um, liquid has a tendency to minimize their surface area so let us suppose like here it has minimized its surface area so how much we can spread its surface this is the question so let us suppose if you have this bubble of uh, a soap this is a soap bubble or a soap film there is a slope soap film uh, soap film means a thin layer a thin layer of um, soap solution and if you are stretching it so how much you can stretch it so it means it has acquired this shape it was just imagine just imagine earlier it was like this and then it uh, due to surface tension it reduced its size till here so what was it earlier that can be measured so there is a mathematical formula for that and uh, that is also uh, obtained from the basics of physics so here there is surface energy uh, actually it is that energy which is absorbed in that surface to minimize its area so <clears throat> work done by force developed by surface tension of liquid minimizes its surface area is called surface energy so uh, in order to calculate that surface energy we will uh, find the work done in stretching a surface so consider a u shaped wire frame over which there is a slider so earlier that slider was somewhere here and now we have pulled it out till here by applying some force against surface tension force uh, developed by that surface tension so here earlier the membrane was this and now that is increased by this amount so here is a force due to surface tension developed by surface tension remember surface tension is not a force but it is some after effect of force and uh, that uh, we have earlier discussed so let us suppose some distance delta x it has moved the slider it is uh, similar as we um, make uh, soap soap surface and uh, we can say soap film so let us suppose we have dipped this wire frame into some liquid and then pull it out and um, we are you know like this if uh, we have uh, dipped uh, uh, this portion into liquid and then dragging uh, this slider out so there will be a, um, a film a thin layer a thin surface of that liquid will be formed so 
in that surface we are stretching out till it can withstand till it get broke so uh, till that we are stretching it out so that we can easily find out uh, what is the surface energy which uh, minimizes its surface area so we will find out work done and that work done will be equal to surface energy so that work done will be equal to force multiplied by displacement and uh, what is this force actually because uh, we are not interested in this force but we are interested in surface tension so we know that surface tension is force upon effective length and what is the left effective length here so this surface see this surface uh, it is similar to this page and uh, this paper has two surfaces so if this is the slider if we are pulling out then it is experiencing force from this side as well as from this side so in the denominator we have to put 2L if this length is L now <clears throat> this W equal to in the place of F we will put S into 2L into delta X and see this 2L into delta X uh, I should write 2 into change in area and into delta X is area change but uh, I will write it as delta A effective where delta A effective depends upon uh, might vary according to the given situation so if there are two surfaces like here in this thin film there are two surfaces one is this side other is that side like this paper one is this other is that but for some solid like uh, water in a glass there is only one surface so if two surfaces are there then this delta effective is twice of delta a and if one surface is there then this a effective is delta a so just we will keep this thing in our mind so uh, this work done is the measure of surface energy us equal to s delta a effective and uh, that is why surface tension can also be defined as surface tension is the surface energy per unit change in area so it's another unit is joule per meter square so um, there is another concept related to this surface tension which is excess pressure inside a bubble in air so if there is if we blow a bubble of soap then we have to blow some air into it i mean we have to give it some um, extra air pressure so well due to that pressure it should expand and due to surface ten surface tension it should contract so in between somewhere um, both um, effect balances balance each other so let us suppose earlier its size is was like this and then uh, excess pressure has done some work to give it this shape so uh, there is a push pull so uh, this condition we are considering so earlier its radius was r and now its radius has increased by delta r and uh, inside it there is a pressure pi inside pressure and there is po outside pressure now uh, how will we calculate um, excess pressure so excess pressure will be pi minus po okay this is the first thing most general thing but there are some other things also means uh, it has stretched some uh, its surface so there is some surface energy absorbed in this uh, bubble and that surface energy us is equal to s delta a effective and uh, s is there delta a see this time it has two surfaces one inside one outside so we have to multiply it with two and now uh, change in surface area so change in surface area is four pi this this area minus this area four pi r plus delta r whole square minus four pi 
R square. So 4 pi 4 pi will be taken outside, which will be 8 pi s and what will be inside whole square of this r square plus delta r square plus 2 r delta r minus r square r square r square will get cancelled and this small r square will be neglected in comparison to this quantity because delta r is already very small and its square will be vanishingly small so us is equal to now it will be 8 pi s and into 2r delta r all right so next thing we will find work done in doing so so work done by that excess pressure is pressure multiplied by area why i did that because pressure into area is force so it is the force and it has displaced this surface actually i have displaced the camera all right so i was so excited about this so that displacement is delta r and according to uh, the law of conservation of energy so this uh, absorbed energy is equal to the work done or change in energy this is also called change in energy is equal to this work done so w uh, and yeah this is excess pressure and that is the resultant of both the pressures so w equal to us and this is p excess and 4 pi r square delta r is equal to 8 pi s 2 r delta r r r will get cancelled and this square one term will get cancelled 4 to the pi is also cancelled this is s okay so p excess which is equal to 2 to the 4 4 s upon r so you could remember it uh, once a student cheated from someone else and uh, written this as 45 upon 12 so you can correlate with that okay so next is bubble in liquid uh, we can also call it cavity so here um, there is liquid and bubble in inside the liquid so earlier it was this and now it became this actually uh, you can't judge that push pull because it is uh, somewhat balanced in between so this is i am giving uh, a condition like uh, earlier it was um, due to surface tension it was this and then uh, excess pressure it was pulling out and surface tension was reducing it and then it uh, somewhere uh, get balanced somewhere here so this is r this is again delta r outside pressure is po inside pressure is pi and again same thing will go and uh, this excess pressure is equal to pi minus po and uh, what about this po actually uh, there will be pressure due to liquid the atmospheric pressure so many things are there for po so i'm not going into it but be very very watchful about this what is this PO? It is inside the liquid. So liquid pressure plus atmospheric pressure. So it is a bit complicated. But I am interested in the pressure inside this bubble. So uh, once again, US, actually the energy, the energy change here. Or simply I am saying the en uh, surface energy absorbed by this uh, bubble. So that will be S into delta A effective. And uh, as we did earlier, here only one surface is there. It was having two surfaces, but it is a cavity. It has only one surface. So us will be equal to s, and this is 4 pi r plus delta r square minus 4 pi r square. So us is equal to s, and uh, we can take 4 pi outside. And what is inside? So we can square it, delta r square plus 2 r delta r minus r square r square r square again get cancelled and this will be neglected so you can write a line also neglecting delta r square in comparison to 2r delta r uh, why why are not we uh, ignoring this well uh, just imagine if it is 0.1 so square of it will be equal to 0.01 and if it is 0.1 and but it is multi being multiplied by this number which is uh, might be greater than somewhat greater than this delta y, uh, delta r so that is why this entire quantity will be 
very very greater than this delta r square so u s equal to s 4 pi and uh, here subtracted 0 neglected so it is into 2 r delta r and uh, okay so I was surprised that why we have gone till with this depth here because here space was more uh, space is more actually so now um, that's all or else uh, something else we can do okay one more thing I can do I can stretch it a bit so it will be 8 pi r delta r nothing else nothing more nothing less so and work done work done is equal to once again excess pressure into area 4 pi r square and displacement so equate both of them according to conservation of energy so p excess 4 pi r square delta r is equal to s 8 pi r delta r uh, so this will get cancelled everything so finally p excess will be here if you will do it carefully it will come out to be 2 s by r this time resemble it with 25 pi 12 and last is a drop so this is a drop but earlier it was this here a pi r radius this is delta r increase so once again p excess is equal to pi minus po and uh, once again us is equal to s delta a effective once again there is only one surface that is the outside surface so us is equal to entire this term so us will be entire this term s 8 pi r delta r so work entire this term p excess 4 pi r square delta r entire this term w equal to us so finally it will also come out to be p excess 2s upon r so for drop and cavity derivation is same for bubble uh, derivation differs here only so what is it's important uh, to us um, so uh, we can find um, excess pressure inside the bubble and all that but uh, it plays uh, a key role uh, in understanding uh, capillarity now what is capillarity so here uh, capillarity the ascent or descent of liquid in a capillary uh, is called capillarity so here it is uh, here i have explained capillary a thin strand like a fiber uh, not like uh, not uh, i'm not talking about a fiber which is uh, which can be bent or uh, mm, i'm just uh, saying about something which is very fine very a uh, very thin cylinder a fine cylinder with a bore along its length um, for example, uh, the needle of syringe is the best example of capillary. So, needle of syringe, uh, it looks like this. It is cylindrical, very fine cylinder and with a bore inside it. We have to call it bore, not a hole. The reason behind that is uh, hole can be anything. Hole can be here, here, but uh, a bore is always along um, the length. So, uh, to understand capillarity, we should understand few things, few other things like angle of contact and meniscus. What is angle of contact? So, here is uh, the definition, the angle between tangent to the liquid surface and uh, the other surface. Uh, in contact with uh, the liquid is called angle of contact so uh, in two ways we can uh, draw that angle of contact uh, first thing um, a liquid can wet a surface in this way it is sticking to that surface and uh, as earlier I uh, just uh, uh, explained about cohesive force and adhesive force so here adhesive forces are dominant so that why that's why it is sticking to that surface and now if i draw a tangent here so that tangent and this is the angle uh, between this surface in contact with this uh, drop and this tangent this angle is called angle of contact and uh, this is an acute angle this can be an acute angle this can be an obtuse angle here cohesive force is greater We have to take this angle from this side within liquid in contact 
with the liquid. So in this case, theta is greater than 90. Obtuse angle. So the two conditions are there. Either that liquid wets a surface or it does not. Now, meniscus. So curved surface form formation by the liquid which is in contact with a solid surface is called meniscus. So let us suppose uh, if we dip mm, a solid plate in two different uh, liquids. So there are two possibilities either it will make this type of angle or it would make this type. Even flat uh, is also possible like uh, if this is the surface. This is also possible, but uh, more likely we will classify um, because we are discussing about meniscus, so we are dealing with these two situations. So here, this is angle of contact, acute angle of contact, and here, obtuse angle of contact, angle uh, always taken within liquid. So this is the inside the liquid, within liquid, inside the liquid, within liquid. We can't take this angle or this angle. So this is how uh, meniscus and angle of contact are uh, related to each other. Why meniscus forms? So well actually in your syllabus the mathematics behind it is uh, not directly covered so I'm not going into it but let us suppose okay let us suppose I'm talking about this situation now what is happening due to surface tension what happens Actually, uh, this liquid we know we know that uh, this liquid uh, stretches uh, itself um, to minimize its surface area. But once again, uh, there uh, uh, is either cohesive force or adhesive force uh, dominant one. So this time, if adhesive force is dominant one, then the molecules will be pulled toward this object, this surface, and due to this, it will stretch it stretch these molecules in upward direction not directly like this but uh, somewhere along this and then there will be a component on upward direction and ultimately these molecules will be pulled in upward direction and finally forming this kind of curved surface and hence forming a meniscus then what is happening here if cohesive force is dominant then due to surface tension it will try to minimize its surface area and form this so here this is the direction of angle of contact so because here cohesive force is dominant so uh, the surface is being pulled toward the liquid itself and that is why um, there is a convex shape of meniscus next is this ascent or descent formula actually uh, i'm deriving it for ascent formula and uh, i'll just uh, do a slight change in that and it will become descent formula so first i have a capillary and then I place it into a liquid so just dipping I've just dipped it not just the touch but a little bit deeper inside now what will happen it will form a meniscus I'm considering that theta is uh, less than 90 that is uh, concave meniscus is forming um, adhesive force is dominant uh, okay now now what will happen actually th uh, this force will pull the liquid up uh, not in this side but uh, from inside because here it is not possible to stretch this larger surface but inside, inside also a curved surface forms and this curved surface resembles with that cavity which we studied earlier. Lost that page somewhere I think, no, there. So it, this curved surface, this meniscus inside this capillary re resembles with this cavity inside the liquid. If you cut this cavity here. So see, here liquid, here liquid, everywhere liquid, and there is an empty region. So it resembles with that. Here liquid is there. So it resembles with there. So here inside this um, sphere, this uh, cavity, there 
uh, is uh, excess pressure here is some pressure outside is some pressure and there is excess pressure resultant some pressure so we can correlate the situation here and uh, but there is a, again a push pull because uh, due to this force it will stretch this thing up i mean if i draw it uh, in three dimension so it will look like this it will look like this all the points which are in contact with this capillary inner surface of this capillary will rise up of course uh, this uh, middle region is not directly in contact with this so that is why we are getting this curved shape it is something like this and from the sides it is rising it is like this so in the same way it is rising until what till till uh, how much height uh, will it rise so once again i would say there is a push pull this force this adhesive force due to produced due to surface tension is pulling um, entire uh, this uh, uh, this circumference in upward direction and so also it is pulling out entire liquid surface in upward direction so there is a formation of a column inside that oh, inside that cavity um and let us suppose its height is h till this free end its height is h so there is a liquid column and this liquid column will exert a pressure and uh, if i correlate this pressure with that excess pressure actually this liquid column has a pressure acting downward but if we ignore it and we would say that pressure inside this cavity is pushing this wall downward then we can say that this pressure and that pressure both are equal see this is what the correlation between two different quantities not actually but yeah of course we can correlate it is not it is not a cavity but it resembles with that and that pressure inside this cavity if it would be there has the tendency to pull it out and now what is pulling it is this pressure pressure due to this column so what we can do we can do one thing at equilibrium p excess will be equal to pressure of column so excess pressure we know its formula for cavity you know remember that 25 upon 12 But what is that R? R is this radius of that cavity, supposed cavity, and here it is H rho G. H is this height of this column. Rho is density of this liquid. G, of course, acceleration due to gravity. So this is the ascent formula. Actually, from here we will calculate H, which is equal to 2 S upon R rho G. Now there is a big problem with this R because uh, Uh, we would not have a standard value for r so how can we find out this so once again this is theta and this is actually uh, angle of contact and now see this diagram i'm drawing separately this is r this is theta this is 90 degree this is of course 90 degree this is 90 minus theta mm, oh no 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 this is yeah of course this is 90 this is theta so this is 90 minus theta and this is 90 minus theta this is 90 so this is again theta and what is r actually this is r so what will be that let us suppose it is x then Based upon hypotenuse is cos theta, so x equal to no no uh, not I am writing it r 
that is the radius of capillary this will be the radius of capillary i'm writing this r here this was the radius of that cavity and this is the radius of capillary so okay so uh, so a small r but where can we put that small r okay i'm doing it r cos theta uh, but what we can do we can uh, get the value of r and we can put it here so it will become h equal to 2 s upon r upon cos theta rho g so finally it will become h equal to 2 s cos theta upon r rho g and uh, we know that uh, theta we know theta theta can be acute for acute theta cos theta is positive so h will give positive value that relate to ascent rise of liquid and if theta is obtuse so cos theta we know beyond 90 degree um, theta become uh, cos theta become negative so that will give a negative value so h will become negative so that lead to descent so due to this capillary action actually in the candles or diaz uh, that fuel actually in the case of candles fuel is that wax which melts rises through the wick and burns and uh, in diaz uh, there is a wick cotton wick in it and um, there is oil or uh, fat or something else it burns so because that wick is the cotton wick it has so many capillaries in it uh, so um, that uh, oil rises through those capillaries and then it burns and uh, similarly um, okay in in um, in the farmer's field uh, while plowing when they plow their fields what they do uh, they break the capillaries um, of the soil so that uh, loss of uh, moisture from the soil uh, can be stopped like if this is the soil so there will be so many capillaries so moisture of the soil will go out from these capillaries will reach here and go out from the capillaries so by flowing these capillaries get disturbed and this is how um, the moisture inside the soil is maintained okay factors affecting surface tension uh, first temperature so uh, in most of the cases mostly with increase in temperature surface tension decreases second is uh, addition of impurity so once again generally uh, if uh, with the addition of impurity surface tension decreases but it depends upon type of impurity so both, for both the cases i can explain like uh, if you have uh, hot soup so uh, it has lesser surface tension than cold soup and uh, some people argue that hot soup is tastier than cold soup but it is uh, just a perception because i like uh, bit colder soup, soup so but i can explain it like if it is our tongue and hot soup uh, hot soup will spread over it because of low surface tension it will spread over it and because of uh, its low surface tension it has been spread and uh, it affects the taste buds more than the cold soup it will spread to limited region and it will not give that much of taste that of um, in comparison with hot soup but once again it is just a perception because i like colder soup uh, okay second thing addition of impurity so uh, there are so many videos uh, in youtube uh, they make uh, a boat using a paper and they apply uh, some detergent or dishwash soap on one side of that boat and then they place it um, into the water and what happens it moves of its own of its own why is it so because uh, what happens the surface uh, which is uh, in contact surface of water which is in contact with that detergent uh, that region will 
this detergent will mix with that uh, liquid and uh, the surface tension of this liquid will decrease in comparison to this this surface of liquid has relatively higher surface tension so whatever the force uh, exerted by the uh, effect of surface tension um, on this boat due to this liquid will be dominant in this side than in this side so that this boat will move in forward direction you can try it uh, not with this boat but you can take a paper piece and uh, just apply some detergent on this side and then place it and use a, a small strip and when you will place it there it will move in forward direction so that's all in this video try to find out more examples for uh, surface tension and uh, yeah it is uh, uh, it is a very daily life um, uh, i mean a topic which is used in our daily life it is that so study it very well and uh, it is not a longer topic a very short topic so that's it in this video bye bye